Good evening, I'm Andy with the Deplorable General. Um, every week we bring you tactical tips and tricks, guns and gear review and political commentary. I myself am a military veteran. I'm the president of uh, Tactful Tactical. It's our parent company. Uh, we do firearms instructing, we do security consulting, that sort of thing. Um, if there's something that you're interested in, you can check us out on our Facebook page, Tactful Tactical, or you can email us at tactfultactical at usa.com. Um, we like to start out our episodes with giving some shout outs to the local gun shops that we like to, to visit or that we recommend to people. Um, so down in Shrewsbury, we have the Gun Bunker. Uh, up in York, heading on West Market Street towards Gettysburg on the right hand side, we have Carbon and Steel Sporting Goods. Um, down in Jefferson, we have Jefferson Firearms LLC. And then in Hanover, we have WE Cell Sporting Goods, um, all, all of which are great um, little shops to visit, all locally owned places. Um, you can places that you can go into and just feel a real relationship and connection with these people um, and maybe buy a gun. Um, Jefferson also has like surplus <laughs> and also so does uh, so does gun bunker. They have like a whole line of different like uh, surplus and food storage and stuff like that. So if you need anything like that, go check them out. Um, we also like to give a shout out to uh, FN, FN Firearms. Uh, was one of the first companies that would actually ever send us anything to to wear or to give out to our viewers. Um, great gun company. I think they're one of the most underrated firearms companies uh, in the country, and I think maybe lack of advertising, but they are one of the top dogs as far as I'm concerned. Um, so check out FN if you're ever in the market for a firearm. Um, big news this week, uh, we have partnered with the National Concealed Carry Association. Um, Basically, they are going to be like a Sam's Club of the gun world, okay? So they have, uh, they're going to have like optics, or they have currently, that they're building their platform. They have optics, they have knives, they have magazines, they have accessories, um, ammunition, uh, and, and soon, soon to have firearms, and they do... Um, it's like a membership, okay? And so basically, you pay for the membership, and you get uh, you get wholesale access to all of these different products. Great prices. Um, it's a really really cool idea. So uh, we've partnered with them. Hopefully next week we have a link to share with you for that, so you can check it out and you could join in on it. We're going to be ordering products from them periodically, maybe once a month, and we're going to bring those products in. We're going to do reviews for you. Um, and we're going to show you where the value is in that program. It's a really cool program. It's it's really cool. Um, you can check out their Facebook page, National Concealed Carry Association. Uh, Taylor is the guy who kind of started the whole thing up. Really good guy. Um, and he has been on top of just answering anybody's questions or concerns just like that. So great organization. Check them out. Like I said, next week we'll have an actual link for you to check them out and, and hopefully a discount code to sign up for that club. Um, so tonight, we are going to do a review on some of the packs that we have up here. And, and here with me, uh, we have Dan, who is an avid outdoors enthusiast, a backpacker. He spent some time on the Appal Appalachian Trail. Um, he's been all over the, the world. Uh, he does skis uh, Jackson Hole. I mean, like he's, he's all over the place. Avid outdoor enthusiast. Um, so, Dan, thank you for coming on. My pleasure, Andy. Um, so, these backpacks that we actually received here, uh, these were actually, full disclosure, they were given to us um, for review purposes. Uh, tonight we are just going to kind of go over some of the specific details of those actual packs and um, why we like different ones as opposed to other ones and different price points and stuff like that. So um, all in all, they are in the three-day assault pack style pack. Um, they typically hold between um, 30 and 45 liters for that style of pack, uh, which is... To be honest with you, I've been hard pressed to really be able to fit three days worth of stuff into a three day assault pack. Um, I don't know, maybe like a small child or a midget might be able to handle three days in these things. But me, it's uh, it's it's difficult even trying to strip it down to the bare bones. But that's what they're called is the three day assault style pack. So for what it is, um, we have three packs here and then we have kind of a, a bonus and um, 
they all kind of meet different price points and they and they have different features and we're going to talk about it and i'm going to kind of give you some of the specs on it and then dan will give you some of his insight on what he thinks about each one of these and then we'll both at the end kind of just let you know what we think are uh best pick of these three um are and then we'll, we'll go from there so um we'll go from your left to my right <laughs> that wasn't right at all <laughs> your left to your right um and we're gonna have here we're gonna have the the roaring fire tactical pack um now this is the only one that i have loaded up with gear because this is kind of my personal favorite this has been one that that i've used a lot in the past mm, six months or so and um i like it i like it a lot and and i'll kind of i'll break into some of the things considerations i guess with this pack but out of the three i think it's the most robust um so in this i'm just going to kind of break down what i've got in this thing because it's pretty packed full um i have a, a ifac first aid kit here on the side i have a canteen a gi canteen on this side i have a, a radio up here this i'm going to do a review on coming soon it's the uh, arcturus outdoor gear survival um blanket it's uh it's pretty cool inside of this thing like I said, I have it packed. This has been my my favorite one just because of how robust it is. I have uh, some gloves. I have a poncho. A little uh, entrenching tool for like digging and shoveling and whatnot. Um, water purification tabs up front there. In this pocket here, I have a hammock. I have some coffee, because that's important. Um, and a lighter with some duct tape wrapped around it. No, no specific rhyme or reason for what's in some of these, the way that I have them. It's just kind of where the stuff fits. Um, up here, we have an, orient, an orienteering <coughs> kit, which has some um, a little survival kit. It's got some map reading tools and instruction. Um, and then the big pocket, I have some MREs for calories. Um, I have another big GI poncho. Um, <laughs> I have uh, some, some knee pads, some rope, and some paracord. So this is not comprehensive at all. I think uh, some paracord, some, like a, a 50 feet of, of, or so of paracord would probably be a good addition to this. Um, the pack itself, it has molly up on the front here for your molly attachments. It's got some little molly uh, little loops here on the side and then some on this side. It's got a really strong uh, carry handle. It's got padded shoulder pads here. Um, the back is, is well padded for me, I think. I, I, I feel comfortable with it. It's got this little pouch right here in the back for your um, water bladder, if you have one. Um, and it's got the chest clips and a, and a belt clip. Now, I don't think, no, they're not. Uh, neither of them are removable. They're both, well, no, yeah, it looks like this one, the chest clips are uh, removable. They have uh, YKK zippers, which are kind of the standard in, in zippers, really good quality zippers. And this is a um, 500D Kodora um, nylon. So it's almost like a canvasy feel. And that's why I like it. It's, it's pretty robust. The stitching is really nice. Um, and this is the Roaring Fire. I keep the tags on it until we do the reviews just so I can remember what they are and so you can see what, what company they are. Um, overall, it's a, it's a really good pack and I like it. The, 
the, the canvas is more robust, but it's also heavier. I haven't taken this on a long trip, um, and Dan might have some insight into this, but uh, I haven't taken it on too long a trip, so that heavier canvas might actually be, or nylon, but uh, might actually be a consideration when it comes down to weight um, that some of these other packs might be a better option. But I like the, the robustness and, and the fact that I can you know, do a lot of trekking through sicker bushes in the woods and whatnot, and I don't have to worry about it getting snagged and ripped. Um, but overall, this one was, was my favorite pick, and I've gotten a good six months worth of use out of it. You have any impressions on this one? Well, I like it. It's the size I usually prefer, uh, but again, weight is a deal breaker. Yeah. If everyone knows, uh, you know, a pound, a, a pound of weight that means a lot if you're going on a 20 mile trek. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I have, like I said, I haven't really taken it on that long a trip. I mean, most I've hiked with is maybe a good mile or so, and um, and with that, it's comfortable. The padding is adequate. Um, the straps have these adjustable adjustments, I don't know what they're called, straps, um, that you can pull and kind of cinch the pack up higher a little bit onto your shoulders, which is nice. Um, you know, all around this is, I think, the the most, uh, like, versatile. It's got a bunch of different pockets. It's got Molly, um, and the pocket size on all of them, uh, all of the pockets are appropriate for the type of pockets they are. Next. Uh, so just, just as a, a, a reference point on that pack, uh, the Roaring Fire, we'll have links in the descriptions, but they sell for $41 on Amazon. So for the price, not bad. Now for the Marting Top, that's this next one here. These go for about $60, so they're a little bit more expensive. When I first got it, I thought that it was not as good quality. Um, but I was really surprised. So these are made out of more of a, a polyester than a nylon. And yeah, polyester. And. Um, when I first got it, I thought that that meant that it was not as good quality because of the material. Um, and then I didn't, I didn't give much credit to, to this pack, but they also included this 60 liter pack with that one. And this is just something that I'm going to show off. I actually took this on a weekend camping trip. Um, with my family. It, it fit all of my family's clothes and, and um, toiletries and, you know, odds and ends, cooking stuff in this pack. And it really, it really held up. Um, it's got a zipper that is like a duffel bag or gym bag style where it kind of opens up around and around the whole side so you can lay it down and open it up. Or it's got the zipper on top. I'm not going to go too deep into this pack right now um, because it's not in the same class as these. But it really opened my eyes to the brand. So then I took another step back and, and another look at this Marting Top and I started to understand why they did some of the things that they did. Um, the buckles don't quite feel as, as sturdy. Um, the zippers are, again, they're not quite the same. They're not YKK zippers, but they're not bad. They feel sturdy. They don't feel like I'm gonna pull on them or bend them. Um, they have Molly on the front. They have these straps here that you could put your, um, you know, your blanket or, or whatever into your bedroll. Um, side pockets, um, a small pocket up here in the front, uh, another uh, middle pocket, and then you have like your clamshell on the back. Um, all relatively, I think that they're like fairly sized. Um, for what they are, if I can figure out how to work a zipper. Oh, it's in the tag. Um, but again, can, could you fit three days worth of stuff in this thing? Uh, I would say that you could probably fit a pair of clothes in this, uh, maybe a change of socks, 
a little bit of water and you know a little bit of food I, you'd be hard pressed i think to fit three days in this you what do you i, I think in some of your treks that you've gone in you've, you've probably had that would be my overnighter yeah yeah I, that's that's what i would say this is more of like the one day pack the one day assault pack but it would, it would give you plenty of space now it's cool the plenty of padding on the back here um not quite as good as the roaring fire i don't think it's a little bit more feels kind of like styrofoam than the soft padding that's in the roaring fire but it feels like it would do well enough uh, for ventilation and the um Oh no, this one's not removable either. So this is not removable either for the uh, for the waist strap, and it does have the the uh, chest clips here. So all in all, like I said, this is this is a good pack, but it's also um, this pack I think was only 30 liters, and I believe that the Roaring Fire was 35 or 40. It's, so it's a little bit bigger, but I, you can really you can really feel and, and notice the difference in the size of these things between this one and the last one. So um, definitely smaller, definitely a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more restricted on what you can do with this thing. But it's, uh, for, for what it is and for, actually I looked at, so this one is, is actually, it's $40 as well. So if it was between this or that one, um, I would probably choose the Roaring Fire, but this is a close second, honestly. Um, and But this would be, like Dan said, this would be more of an overnight pack. Um, I would say maybe a little, what, a half the size more of like a, a kid's school backpack? Exactly. Maybe double the size? But it's a nice pack. Again, weight is an issue. Yeah. So, keep that in mind. So, and then the last one, This is a company that I've followed for a while, and I enjoy I enjoy the products that they have. Um, this is part. This is this company is called Helicon Tex, and they're a Polish company, um, and they make gear for the military. Um, and this is part of their Bushcraft line. It's called their Matilda Pack. Um, this pack is I believe it's 35 liters as well and, and out of the three of these I would say this one is probably gonna be the most versatile uh, it, it, it it's made out of like a polyester same kind of light material as that other pack the, the marting top but it's um, it's a really solid like ripstop polyester um, and it's got one big pocket in the middle and then uh, three pockets on that are actually attached to the front of the pack here. Um, I wasn't sure about that at first. I wasn't sure about the one big pocket. I kind of like having smaller pockets so that way I can compartmentalize my gear and know where th different things are. Um, after running with this thing for a couple of months, I kind of started to like it. I think if you can if you can figure out how you organize your pack, it's it's not bad to have one big compartment. Um, it's just it's just a matter of learning how to fold your clothes, um, learning how to stack your gear inside of it. Um, it's got again YKK zippers. Um, up here we have different two different drawstrings to help with um, waterproofing. Um, all of these claim to be waterproof or water resistant. Uh, I haven't really put them much to the test on that, but I'm just by what they advertise, which is important. Um, these pockets are a pretty decent size. I mean, you could fit, I would say that water bottle, that uh, camelback bottle that you had yeah. probably fit yeah, in there I'd well. Yeah, yeah, quart size. Yeah. Um, any number of things. Um, the clips feel real nice and sturdy. Uh, overall, this one I think is probably the best, the, the, the most well made, but it's also the most expensive. This pack runs about a hundred dollars. Um, so really, really good pack. Oh, it's got the, um, the uh, nylon 
on the bottom here and the polyester up top. So you have, this is where you're setting it down on the ground, um, a little bit more robust down there. And then up here, they, they made it with a polyester just to conserve on weight. They have some molly straps up in here. Um, all in all, I, again, I like it. I, I really, I like all three of these packs. Um, but for the money though, I still think that the Roaring Fire is my favorite. They, they all have different uh, capabilities and, and different like uses that you could really try to come up with them. I, don't, I think all of them are good enough quality that I would recommend. Uh, personally, if I had to, to take my money for dollar for dollar um, and what you're getting, I would say that I would either go with the Marting Top or, um, or the Roaring Fire because of just their 40 bucks. And for a good pack for 40 bucks, you're hard pressed to find. I don't think this is any worse. It's just $60 more. So, um, you know, when you were looking at these packs, I don't know that I find um, a reason that I would voluntarily spend the extra 60 bucks for this particular pack. But if somebody came to me and said, hey, Andy, what do you think about the Helicon Tex Matilda pack? I would say, dude, it's awesome. It's it's a great pack. I'd recommend it. Um, that's th that's my impression on these on these three packs. Did you have a preference? Well, I think you're spot on. I, I tend, as I get older, to like the smaller ones. I don't go on the long hikes I used to anymore. Yeah. Uh, but one thing about if you notice these clips right here, how rugged and sturdy they are. Yeah. Uh, th this right here is is well b well built, but it's a little bit different price point. Um, and but, we're still not talking some like a Max yeah. Expedition at like three hundred bucks, you know, like three four hundred bucks as some of the some of these higher end packs are. So it's it's not out of reach still at a hundred bucks, but we're talking, you know, 40. I'm holding I'm holding my favorite in my hand. Yeah. So. Yeah, I like it. It's light. It, like you said, it's it's smaller, but it's still got a couple of different pockets so you can compartmentalize. Um, but enough molly and different straps that you could still strap on a, a bedroll if you wanted to, or you know, a sleeping bag to the bottom of it. Yeah, I like that one too. Like I said, all of these I think have have uh, appropriate uses, and uh, I would say that I'd I'd recommend any of them um, to anybody. So, any closing thoughts? Uh, I think I'm gonna go camping this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. You How gotta help you? me with my patio. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me, Andy. Yeah, uh, thanks for coming on, Dan. I appreciate pleasure you coming it. in. Absolutely. Um, again, links are going to be in the description on the YouTube video for these. And then I'm going to have separate independent reviews for each of these backpacks. I'm going to go in depth with each of them. I'm going to load them all up with gear for each individual video. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to show you a video of me actually walking around with them. Um, that's to come on YouTube. I will, uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash don't tread on my liberty, you'll find our videos there. Hit subscribe and you'll be notified when I put those videos out if you're interested in these. Um, if you can't find it that way, just search the Deplorable General and you'll see my pretty face come up. Just uh, click on that video and then hit subscribe and then you'll get notifications of any video that we have moving forward. It's really important that you do that for us. Go on and uh, subscribe and like our videos because YouTube actually, um, they sabotage us. They will not promote any of our videos uh, because of the content that we that we have uh, because we are gun related and we have all these guns up on the on the background here so um, they they will not promote our videos so in order to grow it we have to do it organically and that involves you um, at home subscribing and sharing and liking our videos and, and comment too if you think uh, we have good content let us know or if you think our stuff is garbage eh, let us know that too um, we're always we're always looking to grow uh, thank you for tuning in, and Dan, thanks again for coming on. Uh, I'm Andy, Deplorable General, over and out.